in the second year of the Chongzhen reign of the Ming Empire. The once powerful empire is about to collapse. Inside, there are Yinchuan soldiers waving their weapons vigorously, causing the nine provinces to split apart. Outside, the new lord of Jianzhou marched eastward and westward, commanding his troops to enter the border. In the drought that swept through Shangxi, Lu Qingzong stepped on the bare ground for thousands of miles and walked forward with his head held high. Keywords of the novel Stubborn Thief with No Pop-Ups, Complete Collection Download of Stubborn Thief TXT, Latest Chapter Reading of Stubborn Thief Chapter 1 Octopus River Castle You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 1 Octopus River Castle Lu Qingzong impatiently waded into the shallow wooding river, lifted the hem of his fluffy red armor skirt, squatted down, and pressed the water bag into the river with trembling hands. In February, the river water with icy flowers was icy cold and piercing, and pouring it into the throat made it even colder to the point where the roots of the teeth were sore, as if the entire throat was being held tightly. He stood up and took a few steps back, squinting his eyes. His gaze crossed the dry riverbed and dry grass on the opposite bank, and he looked further into the undulating barren mountains and ridges. The drought has changed the appearance of northern Shangxi. After a while, the palpitations caused by hunger in his stomach eased slightly, and he then pressed the handle of the goose feather knife at his waist, stepping deep and shallow on the dry and cracked sand pile riverbed towards the official road. A Mongolian mixed flower horse is tied to a withered tree next to the official road. The horse is very well behaved, just a bit thin and appears to have a huge head. A few months ago, the long bangs were still white, and the name was also San Fat. But later on, its owner became nervous and used red dye to turn the bangs red, and the name was changed to Red Flag. The red flag carried a lot of things on its body, and the bridle and saddle were needless to say. On the left side of the horse's buttocks were bows and arrows, and on the right side were two wild geese. Underneath the wild goose is a slender black-haired Shangxi fine dog, with the same fate as the red flag. It used to be a strong and sturdy dog, but later changed to a small diamond wind. Xia's Huanfeng's hair was wet and prickly, shivering from the cold. He couldn't forget to sniff the scent of geese with his nose, and clear saliva flowed down his mouth on the ground. Lu Qingzong has a problem. He has two memories. Not long ago, after a high fever, in addition to the memories of the past 18 years, there was an additional memory from 400 years later in my mind. Two memories are intertwined and contradictory, seriously affecting normal life. Just talk about this mount. Once upon seeing this black-haired Mongolian horse, his first reaction was to affectionately call out, three fat, and add some hay. Now that the little horse has dyed its head with red hair, I don't even want to call it a red flag when I see it, and even want to hang an engine on it. Lu Qingzong speculated that the owner's soul of the memory might have been swallowed by him about what happened to him. Because he was indeed very hungry and hadn't eaten enough for several months. Not to mention having a soul in his mind, even if there was a ghost in front of him, he might have eaten it. He now enjoys finding a place to sit quietly when he has nothing to do, recalling the bizarre world in his mind 400 years later, learning strange new knowledge, and even wanting to experience a life without going hungry. Unfortunately, every time I finish my daydream, I still have to return to the drought-ravaged northern Shangxi. The straight seam cowhide boots belonging to the border army cavalry stepped on the cracked lust ground, while the dilapidated and collapsed half-walled residential buildings and adobe cave dwellings in the distance made the official road look particularly desolate. The withered old elm tree, without its bark, still stubbornly stands on the ground, and the broken branches fall all over the ground without anyone picking them up. Lu Qingzong loosened his reins and walked through the official road to the collapsed residential building next to the road. He picked up a large brick and smashed a gap in the sealed cave adobe. He looked into the cave in the dusk light and crawled in. In no time, he first took out a pottery water jar outside, which contained half a candle, a hemp rope, and a black sharpening stone. When he crawled out of the hole, he had a dirty water ladle on his back and an ancestral plaque sandwiched under his ribs. 
As for the most valuable object, he held it in his hand and wrapped it in a piece of grey cloth, which was a copper mirror that couldn't be wiped clean. As Lu Qingzong walked towards the big elm tree across the road, he muttered, I reckon your descendants won't come back. Let me, Lu Shitsi, take you to Yuha Fort, and the provincial authorities will ask the bandits to come back and set fire to you. He is not a beggar or a robber, with a distinguished scholar and a respectable job that is enviable. The National Active Border Defense Army is under the jurisdiction of Yensui Town, one of the nine major border defense military regions in the northern part of the Ming Dynasty. Its direct commander is He Ren Long, the defender of Yuha Fort. The position is as a family servant selecting a leader. He has practiced martial arts for six years and served in the army for one and a half years. He rides a swift horse and wields a strong bow weighing a hundred pounds, making him the elite among the elite. No matter how elite they are, they cannot resist the imperial court's refusal to pay military salaries. Yuha Fort is no longer inhabited, and crossing the Great Wall here to Outer Mongolia is closer than going to Yenin Prefecture. It has no resistance to drought. Last year, the crops and seedlings planted by the army outside the fortress were carefully irrigated and still died in the sun. The people who were farming either hung themselves or abandoned their fields and fled south. The old elm tree has withstood drought, but has not escaped the hungry beggars. Its bark has been stripped clean, leaving behind a bare and waterless trunk that quickly withers away. Unfortunately, standing under this old elm tree, Lu Qingzong looked up at the branch that had not sprouted any new shoots, licked his cracked lips, and continued to lead his horse forward. Yuha Fort is not far away, and the burning clouds on the horizon reflect the shadow silhouette of the distant castle. If this tree is still alive, another month will be a good season to eat Yuqian Wodu with white noodles. Unfortunately, it's not a pity that this tree has died. Although the tree is dead, people who have never met and eaten the bark can live. Unfortunately, there was neither white noodles nor elm coins in Yuha Fort, only over 400 hungry border soldiers and only enough millet to feed them for a month and a half. Watching the spring start recruiting refugees to plant the 145 hectares of military land, there were no seeds for cows. This year, most of the military garrisons and farmland have been abandoned, which is firmly established. It's not surprising that the land has become barren. Lu Qingzong served as a soldier here for over a year, and the people who cultivated the land changed two generations, with fewer people each time. In the seventh year of the Tianqi reign, he and his elder brother were expelled from the Yenin Prefectural Military Examination Examination Room and recruited by He Renlong, who served as the deputy examiner, to serve as family servants. They arrived at Yuha Fort just in time for the military and civilians who had fled to Guangzhou in large numbers that year. The farmer has been working hard for a year, and the grain he has harvested has not yet been sown in the field. What else can he do without leaving? By the beginning of last spring, another group of refugees from the mountains had been working hard for another year, but in the end, they still remained the same. They either fled south or became bandits in the eastern mountains. In this era, there is no shortage of land in northern Shangxi. The farmland in northern Shangxi is barren, so we need to cultivate extensively and harvest thinly. One bushel of millet and seven bushels of millet are experts. The army in Yuha Fort has many fields and requires people to cultivate them. As long as the people are willing to come, there is a large amount of land for them to cultivate. But this land that has been dry for ten years cannot retain people. Fish River Castle cannot retain people. When recruited by He Renlong, it was agreed that the household servants would receive double pay and double grain, with a monthly salary of 125 silver coins and two stones of millet. Stone is a unit of volume, and Xiaomi has small particles. Two stones weigh nearly 300 pounds. In addition, with a monthly salary of one, two, and five coins of silver, there is less silver circulating in Shangxi. The government's whip law stipulates that people must use silver to pay taxes, so this is a hard currency. 
It is not difficult to exchange one or two silver for three stones of rice when paying taxes in the summer and autumn seasons. Excellent treatment. Lu Qingzong's Jiren father was a tax official of the ninth rank in Yan'an Prefecture two years ago. He was a legitimate court official with a monthly salary of only five stone meters. However, his military salary is similar to the monthly salary of 12,000 to 20,000 yuan in the future memories of recruiting on the streets, and the latter one doesn't count. In fact, the old Zhu family was stationed on the border for 15 months, and the autumn defense even took the head of a captive. However, if the imperial court's food supply was insufficient, it would be fine, and military salaries and silver rewards would not be given. More than a hundred kilograms of millet not only need to be eaten, but also salt, vegetables, sauce, fabric, and all food and clothing needs to be exchanged for grain. The remaining food is not enough for oneself, and we need to find ways to feed the warhorse Hongqi and the hunting dog Xia's Huanfeng, which puts a lot of pressure. Now Emperor Zhu of the Zhu family has owed him 625 silver coins, and he has exchanged 43,751 of Tongbao with officials. This allowed Lu Qingzong to take advantage of the opportunity to go hunting and drill into dilapidated houses where no one lived, to search for something to subsidize his family. Bringing out a discarded pottery jar made Lu Qingzong feel very happy. He patted the red flag and said contentedly, Big head, you have found some hay at night. End of this chapter. Chapter 2 Open Door at Night You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 2 Open Door at Night Yuha Fort is a good place, located at the intersection of Wooding River and Yushi River in the north of Yenin Prefecture. Shan Bay is a good place to guard rivers. Seventy miles to the north is Yulin City, the capital of Yensui Town, and ninety miles to the south is Yinchuan Post in Miji County. The official road for military purposes has been in disrepair for a long time, and grass has grown on both sides of the broad dirt road. Last autumn, hungry people passed by the official road and ate the ground clean, leaving nothing behind. As night falls, the Fish River Castle, backed by the mountains, is like a giant spider lurking in the shadows. The desolate fields outside the moat and the rolling sand beams west of the river are its broken spider webs. On the small road outside the city, the disheveled soldiers and their families, wrapped in tattered coats that could never be washed clean, squatted under the tree with soup bowls filled with new leaves and sprouts, their eyes numb and unfocused. The village without chickens, dogs, or even too many people is silent in spring, like a corpse that has been frozen for a long time in winter, lying outside the fortress. It is not only through clean governance and people's happiness that one can stay indoors at night. As long as one is poor enough, anyone can do it. By bypassing the narrow path, the dry moat of Yuha Fort is within reach. The report on requesting funding for the construction of the city in Yulin is submitted year by year, like a sunken sea. The last time this fortress was built was in the fourth year of the Wanli reign. Taking advantage of the east wind of General Qi Jiguang's construction of a defense line in Jijin, the three Zhang high earthen wall was covered with bricks. However, after that, whether it was the capture of prisoners in the second year of the Tianqi era or the sinking of a corner of the city wall in the third year of the rainy season, no one was able to approve a penny of silver for repair. At this time, the dry moat and two earthen ditches outside the city formed three dry trenches. The wooden fences and deer stockings at the bottom of the trenches were all decayed, and the gaps in the sheep and horse walls near the city wall were filled with wood and grass. The collapsed city wall to the southwest of the fortress still left traces. It's like the war has just left. In fact, this fortress has not encountered an enemy for a full seven years. The garrison congratulator went to Yulin City to pay the general Yaman in the the year of the long, and has not returned yet. The guards at the city gate are also listless. Only when they see the wild geese on the back of the red flag can they become energetic. Oh! Did the lion hit the goose? The gatekeepers gathered around, each swallowing their saliva and looking at the two geese hanging on the horse's buttocks, asking east and west. 
The mountains and waters outside are clear, and bringing back prey is something new. There are more than ten servants from Bauzi who go out every day, and there are not many who can bring back prey even for ten days. Even if something can be brought back, it may not necessarily be prey. In January, someone stole a goat from somewhere with a bell hanging around their neck. Yesterday, a servant felt embarrassed to keep returning empty-handed and caught two sand monks. Sha monk is a small desert lizard and a palm-long creature here, and no one knows how to eat it. In the end, he threw it and fed it to the U River Fort Rat Extermination Team, nodding his brows with plum. Mei Jianmei is a seven-year-old three-flower-old cat. When she was born, the Fish River Fort Rat Extermination Team was still an elite unit with 16 members, including seven siblings. Coincidentally, there was a rat plague, and the whole family died on duty. Many people also died at that time. It was the only one that withstood the difficult times. After being downsized, she inherited her mother's business and took on the important position of the head of the Yuha Fort Rat Extermination Team. When the army on the edge of Yuha Fort was still able to make a living, the monthly salary of Yushi Little Carp dried three tails and several performance-based mice were very happy. Now Meijian Mei is the oldest group of defenders in Yuha Fort. Although she has become thin and hungry, she has agile steps and agile skills, and her prestige remains the same as before. Zaya's Wanfeng, who was starving and eager to go to the rat extermination team several times to get some food, was beaten back, and there are still three scratches left at the corner of his eyes. After Lu Qingzong became a servant, his spare tasks included feeding cats and walking dogs, and cultivating a deep camaraderie with the eyebrows of the rodent extermination team. As long as the team opened, there would be mice brought by the Meichai cat under the window sill that day, even carrying a small diamond wind. It's not working now, no one has anything to eat, how can we care about cats? Standing together with the personal soldiers and gatekeepers of General He Yong, who was also a descendant of the Miji surname He, he said a few polite words and left a message saying, I'll send you the goose feathers at night. He then picked up the two geese and happily reported to General He. Yenling is similar to goose feathers, both of which are ordinary arrow feather materials and not very valuable. However, for people like Lu Qingzong who often use bows and arrows, it is cost-effective to repair their own arrow feathers. Entering Yuha Fort, he saw several people sitting on the inner slope waving at him in the shadow of the city wall torches, making him recognize their elder brothers Lu Qingzu, Shi Changtian Shoujing, and Gao Xian. Lu Qingzu is his biological elder brother, four years older. He is 20.2 years old. In the seventh year of the Tianxi era, he was spotted by He Renlong and recruited to become a servant in Yuha Fort. Last year, a management team named Zhang Wu led the team to become deserters. The two brothers were ordered to recruit refugees from outside to serve as soldiers. When they returned, they filled Zhang Wu's vacancy with a captain, as if there had never been a deserter. Recruiting soldiers is simply not too easy as there are disasters everywhere and refugees everywhere. Being a soldier can at least manage one's fill. It's hard to endure constant hunger, but it's better than starving to death directly. Who doesn't want to live? As for deserters, there are ways to escape. They have armor and weapons, and have learned a lot of killing skills in the army. Being a lawless thief may lead to death, or they may not worry about food and clothing. Tian Shoujing and Gao Xian were both border troops who did not leave with Zhang Wu at that time. The former's hometown was Fuxia County in Yenan Prefecture, just a few mountains away from Lu Qingzong's house, the latter is from Ansai County, slightly further away. In the past, they were both ordinary sergeants. After recruiting new recruits, both of them were promoted to the rank of sergeant. In the process of escaping, the number of troops on the edge of Yuha Fort remained unchanged, but their quality decreased by one level. Did you hit the goose? Lu Qingzu sat on the slope and pointed to the land next to him, where a wooden basket was placed. He said, I reckon you're extremely hungry. I've left you a meal. Not to mention it, 
Lu Chinzon was already so hungry that he couldn't make a sound. He didn't hesitate to sit on the slope, lift the lid of the basket, and then take out the golden millet rice inside and eat it in big gulps. Mitsi and Xiaomi look similar. Although it has cooled down and the sheep oil on top has solidified, the smell has become stronger, but it is very fragrant for those who are extremely hungry. The more you eat, the more sour it becomes. When I joined the army, my family suffered a lot, but the conditions of the Lu family in Longwang Temple Mountain were still good. Otherwise, I couldn't afford to have my two sons go out of work, study, and practice martial arts for more than ten years. Although I also suffered from hunger before joining the border army, I wouldn't have been short of food for three days or two. Captain, a grassroots officer, is not a high dot ranking official in the imperial court and currently does not receive silver. However, he can manage enough food and drink, and Lu Qingzong often seeks help from his brothers, which is why he is struggling. Got it, two arrows, not good at using the string arrows. The third arrow didn't draw its bow, and when it flew up, it couldn't hit. As Lu Qingzong was eating and talking, he suddenly remembered that he had gained something else. He picked up his bowl and untied the pottery jar from his horse's back, saying, Shoujing, you picked up a mirror and half a candle. I don't think it's bad. Can you help me see who left the beans given by the burning? You can exchange them for a handful or two. Their military rations are divided into two types. Rations and monthly rations. Rations are like meal allowances for business trips, and they need to leave the base 40 miles to carry out tasks before being given. Basically, they are all given in full. Last autumn, a group of cavalry were selected from Yuha Fortress to go out and burn the land, but they were reluctant to eat. Some people still have surplus to this day. Okay, I'll ask you when I go back. Tian Shoujing held his arm and looked at the red flag under the earthen slope, which was a bit comical when dyeing his hair. He smiled and said, Hey, that red flag. What's wrong with the name, San Fei? Look at how thin it will be after the name change. Tian Shoujing said a witty remark, but Lu Qingzong, who was stuffed with millet rice in his mouth, was not in the mood to respond with teasing. He picked up a water bag and took two bites into his mouth, followed the food down and turned his head to look at his brother. The horse is thin and the matter is small, Lu Qingzong said with a rare seriousness on his face amidst the flickering torchlight. Brother, I need to think of a way. I didn't pull my bow while hunting today. If we continue like this, our martial arts skills will be ruined, end of this chapter. Chapter 3 Cut Off Rice You are listening at Novel Full Audio. Chapter 3 Cut Off Rice Lu Qingzong's Barracks are I Kills The head statue outside the Kiln Cave is a quadrangle courtyard, but it is larger and sunken. Yuha Fort is a rare place with flat terrain and a lack of food, so I chose to build a sunken cave in the beginning. First, dig a large square pit, and then dig arched cave dwellings in several walls. The number of cave dwellings on each wall varies depending on the size of the pit. For example, their courtyard consists of two kiln dwellings, with ten households on each side and forty people living together. There are sloping walls on the remaining two sides for ascending to the ground while excavating a cellar for storage, on the other side of the wall, a stable was built, and the courtyard was dug with a water well, with a grinding will set up, two shade trees planted, as well as stone locks and weapon racks full of space. Similar regulations apply to the underground pits and caves used by ordinary border soldiers, except that infantry kills replace stables with animal pens. In the past, when they had more food, they could still raise some livestock. This sunken cave roof can still be used for grain cultivation, and in some places there may even be streets with underground quadrangle courtyards. Until now, whether it's the livestock pen in the kiln or the field on the roof, it's useless. The livestock pen is cleaner than the cave, and the roof has no other use except for the yellow road. The golden millet rice was at most half full for Lu Qingzong. Wandering all the way to the barracks, he first threw the red flag into the stable and locked it. 
he picked up a short branch outside the door and ignited it on the Changming stove in the yard. He took it inside and led it towards the table, and the oil lamp that was visible at the bottom lit up. Xia's Huanfeng, who followed in, sniffled and looked at the oil lamp in dissatisfaction. He lifted his front leg and tried to put out the stinky thing on the table. He was scared by Lu Qingzong's extension of his leg and grabbed his tail, whimpering and going to the corner of the dog house to lie down. The flaxseed oil burned in the lamp is because flaxseed looks very much like lice, also known as wall lice sesame, with a faint odor. People don't use it to stir fry vegetables. There are many types of flaxseed oil planted in Shangxi and Gansu, and it is suitable for burning as lamp oil. The thing that this person disliked in his memory became a good thing for stir frying hundreds of years later, as if it didn't smell anymore, and he didn't know why. There were many things that he couldn't understand in another memory, and Lu Qingzong was too lazy to delve deeper. In thirty years, he could make the world look different, let alone spanning the long river of four hundred years of history. It's not surprising that any changes have occurred. Instead of worrying about why flaxseed oil can be eaten in 400 years, he is more willing to think about how to live a life of eating three meals a day and three dishes at a time. Lu Qingzong's martial arts skills, which were about to be starved out, were not easy to come by. He only ate three dishes at once in autumn when he was studying martial arts in the prison of Miji County. The prison in autumn is a good time to have a meal. The good days began in the second year of the Tianxi era, when their two brothers, Lu Xiangyu, a father who had achieved great success as a Juren, stepped down from his position as a Confucian instructor in Yenan Prefecture and was transferred to the position of Jianshu in Miji County. Although there is no grade in the history of classics, they are also appointed officials of the imperial court only after being selected by the Ministry of Personnel and approved by the Emperor. Responsible for arresting prisoners, the office is located west of the county government office, commonly known as the Fourth Lord of the Western Government Office. In the first year of the Tianqi era, Du Wenhuan, the general of the Yensui region, launched a nest raiding operation against the Mongols to avoid the emperor's edict to aid Liao. This led to a siege of Yenan prefecture and threatened to bind Du Wenhuan. Du Wenhuan dared not take his lead, and the Mongols plundered for ten days. General Du was unable to avoid the battle, but instead, the uncle of Lu Qingzong's family called for the plundered bandits to cause harm. Because of this, Lu Juren had the idea of finding some martial arts masters for his two sons who aspired to become successful candidates. Directly elevating the goal of their sons from being ordinary civil jinshu to the level of being a dual jinshu with both civil and military abilities like Xiong Tingbai. This is like the parents in his memory 400 years later who hope their children will succeed, even though their children are still in preschool, they have already begun to worry about the high consumption level in Beijing after being admitted to Tsinghua University. During the six years when Lu Juren became the official historian, the Lu brothers learned a variety of martial arts and became countless martial artists. None of them were famous, but each one was a professional talent. The bow and horse of the Yinchuan Post Guard, the decapitation knife of the Miji executioner, the shooting star hammer of the county yamen's thief catching stick, the survival skills and practical experience of the county prison bandits, and even the Shaolin flower spear learned from the broken precepts monk who lived in prison for a short time. Chi may stick with a spear head, with a combination of stick and spear techniques. Unlike the Ma and Yang family guns with bone and stick skins, it is suitable for solo combat in the martial arts world, showcasing bravery and ruthlessness through movements and jumps, with fewer stabs and more sweeping and smashing. But in battle, this technique is useless. With the use of cluster guns and cluster guns, horse warfare still requires the use of large guns with a length of 5 and 6, and small guns with a length of 7 feet. Even if they move around, they cannot withstand three spearhead thrusts. Back in the day, the prisoners imprisoned in Miji County had to first be asked by the brothers Lu Qingzong about their skills. However, in terms of decapitation food, his older brother was more particular than him, and he was still young and immature at that time. If he caught decapitation food, he would go and rub it off. I can't even control it, 
I just cry and say I'm starving, and he also felt that the decapitation was a waste of food. Most of the condemned prisoners who were about to be executed couldn't eat anything, so the next day he drank a pot of rice wine and went to heaven. He was not at all afraid, and later Lu Juren followed him. The retribution came very quickly. In the seventh year of the Tianxi reign, Lu Juren's term in the imperial examination was completed, and he was promoted back to Yenin Prefecture, serving as the ambassador of the tax department from the ninth rank. The good life of the old Lu family was considered to have come to an end. In those two years, there was a drought in northern Shangxi every other season. In spring, seedlings died from drought, and in autumn, another round of drought forced the people to burn their own houses and hide taxes in the mountains. There were many abandoned fields that could not be sold. There are wealthy landowners who harvest the land, but they pay attention to the individual production and grain storage, and buy your land at a higher price. However, you still have to pay the tax on this land. If the land is gone, farmers can still pay an egg. Lu Juren, who had been cautious and cautious for his entire life, was too timid to pay taxes. He only saw how the people had been forced to do by natural disasters and dared not pay taxes again. I can only enter the magistrate's office. I suggest writing to the court for tax exemption and disaster relief, but my words are a bit harsh. He said that if we don't exempt taxes for disaster relief, I won't be able to finish it in six years, and everyone will die together. The magistrate did not die, but he was not allowed to work for six years. Cursed Shengwan, coupled with poor work performance, and directly imprisoned Lu Juren to make room for others. Being an official means doing things. If this person can't accomplish something, then switch to someone who can. The two brothers are the martial arts candidates who will take the exam. Because their identity is that of a criminal official, they were not able to pass the exam. They were caught in the middle of the exam and kicked out with a stick. They were recruited by He Ren Long, who is the deputy examiner, to their subordinates. Lu Juren was quite accurate. His successor had been in office for three months, and there was a village in the mountains where 110 households could not collect any taxes. He personally led the government officials to force taxes. Unexpectedly, there was only one household left running there. The taxes in Daming are collected according to local quotas. At the grassroots level, it means how much tax 10 households need to pay. After three households have gone, the remaining seven households still have to pay so much. 110 households went to 109 households, and the last household was the neighborhood chief and grain chief, who had to pay taxes on 110 households. If it weren't for a lame and blind old lady, the last household would have run away and couldn't run away. If she had left on her own, she would have forced her to hang herself. If she had been taken away by an official, she would have starved to death, and there was no other way to pay taxes. Finally, he tricked the tax official and two government officials into entering the firewood shed and locked a fire outside. The official who caught him hasn't even arrived yet, and the old lady starved to death and hung herself. Later, Lu Juren was imprisoned for half a year, only to be released when Emperor Chongzhen ascended the throne and granted amnesty to the world. Lu Juren, who returned to his hometown to work in agriculture, was demoted from his official position. My family doesn't have a wealth of gold and silver, and I have to bear the burden of some illusions. The world is going to be chaotic. Lu Qingzong was well aware that his knowledge of studying classics and history from a young age, as well as his memory 400 years later, would determine how far he could go, but martial arts were the foundation of his standing. This determines whether he can walk on alive or not. End of this chapter. Chapter 4 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 4, Brother Lion Lu Qingzong had just placed the lower string of his long bow on a cold kong and stuffed the animal tendon string into his arms. He blew out the oil lamp and heard someone calling him outside the door. He had no choice but to get up and put on a tanned leather jacket spread on the blanket, saying, the door is not inserted. Go pick up a fire bar and light the lamp. Outside the door was a child, 
only nine years old, named Sixteen, with a shiny little brain. Sixteen is a Miji person who fled south with his parents last year. Regardless of whether it's in northern Shangxi or Hunan, people have always had to run to Guangzhou when encountering anything since ancient times. In fact, the yield per mu in Guangzhou is not outrageously high, which is also for a reason. In ancient times, seeking favorable weather conditions and poor infrastructure relied entirely on nature to make a living. Accidentally, droughts and floods occurred, and there were fewer natural disasters in Guangzhou compared to other places. They fled to Guangzhou, where men worked as long dot term laborers and women remarried, and people could always have a way to survive. There are too many people heading south, so there is not enough food on the road for them to escape famine. Both parents starved to death on the road, and sixteen followed another group of people northward in a daze, arriving at Yuha Fort. The Lu brothers went out to recruit soldiers, but it seemed that he had no other way of survival or self dot protection skills. He stayed among the disaster victims and had to be eaten by hungry people sooner or later. They picked him up and begged he run long to stay. Anyway, he is young and eats less. A team of soldiers can feed him fat by eating less than half a bite per meal. This name is also derived from it. The team under Lu Qingzu's management consists of 32 people. Every day, they have a meal together, and 16 people bring an empty bowl. Each person scoops half a spoonful into his bowl, regardless of whether they eat dry or thin. The fixed amount is 16 spoonfuls, so it is called 16. There are many ways to ignite a fire, such as using matches and fire strips dipped in sulfur, friction to ignite a sickle, or a fire switch, which are not cost-effective or convenient enough. In places where many people live together, the most cost-effective way to start a fire is to leave a flame, a Changming stove. Changming stove is a small stove made of mud, similar in principle to a fire stove. It tries to reduce the amount of air entering the kiln as much as possible, keeping it in a smoldering state. When needed, it can start with just a blow of fire. In no time, there was a rustling sound outside the house. The wooden door was pushed open, and under the moonlight, the little bald head poked his head and held a torch to light the oil lamp. When he went out, he rubbed the stick off the ground and placed it next to the stone lock by the door, then turned back and entered the house. When Sixteen arrived at Yuha Fort, his messy hair grew three inches long, giving birth to a head full of cicadas, all of which were lice and eggs. Lu Qingzong used a comb for him several times, but the comb was not clean and he was afraid of infecting others. In the end, he simply shaved his head. Generally, children in the Ming dynasty would shave their surroundings and leave a small hairpin or braid on their head. They would only tie their hair when they grew up, and there were also those who shaved their hair directly. The fortress was filled with soldiers of all sizes, and no one was so particular about them. Later, when he saw that sixteen hair had grown, someone would naturally shave his head. Brother Lion, you're really strong. With such a big lock, how much does it weigh, a hundred pounds? Lu Qingzong, who was draped in a coat on the cool Kong, hugged his arm and smiled, it's only seventy pounds. I used to play a lot before, but now I don't want to play anymore. Let's put it outside and keep it quiet. What is a townhouse? It's just scaring ghosts. The little bald man looked envious and said, it's really impressive. I can even play with a 70-pound stone lock anytime. I can't even lift a three-and-a-half-pound knife, so I have to drag it along. It is normal for a three-and-a-half-pound knife to be swung with great effort. Although it is light, the center of gravity of the knife is in front. When Lu Qingzong first learned the knife, he also felt heavy. It's better in the future. When you grow up to my height, you can play with it. Lu Qingzong asked, why did you come? Oh, Uncle Tian asked me to bring you beans. He played leaf cards with the Chow management team in the barracks, sold the mirror, and asked me to bring the beans over. This made Lu Qingzong frown. Why is Tian Shoujing the uncle and I the lion brother? As he spoke, 
the little bald man put a bag on the table and said, I'll go cook it and crush the hay. Lu Qingzong saw that there were still quite a few beans in the bag and said happily, this old thief indeed has food in his hand. Boil it up, and once it's cooked, you can eat some before going back. Tomorrow there will be wild goose soup to drink. Chao Guan's team is called Chao Yao, and he is also a veteran from the He Renlong family, in his thirties. His hometown is in Hunan, and when he was young, he was transferred to Baoding as a soldier. With good luck and skill, he entered the Beijing arsenal. As a result, he caught up in the Battle of Saru and was sent to Aid Liao. He belonged to the Wang Xian tribe and was defeated by Nurhasai when fighting against the Jurchen. The defeated army fled south all the way. Chao Yao originally wanted to follow the defeated army back to his hometown in Hunan, but was beaten by the governor Zhang Waxu for a while in Hunan. He couldn't enter Tongguan and dared not return to the army, so he had to flee to Shangxi and Shangxi to lay grass. Nowadays, many of the bandits in the Shangxi area are the veterans who came from the collapse of the Saru in the past. They wield swords and have no proper identity, and engage in activities such as occupying mountains and looting houses. Chao Yao was already in Shangxi and couldn't run anymore. He had been a thief for a period of time and had been recruited as a border soldier in Datong with more than a dozen brothers. Who had ever thought that he would be sent to assist Liao again in the year of Tianqi? This time, he didn't want to run to the battlefield and go hungry, so he became a deserter and crossed the Yellow River to northern Shangxi. In northern Shangxi, there was also a period of time when people gathered in the mountains and forests. Later, they were recruited by He Renlong and given a team of 50 people to manage, and they did a good job. They are all quite familiar with each other. Lu Qingzong also learned some wrestling from Chao Yao, but his skills were not very good, so he just fell and played. While Xiao Sixteen was cooking beans, Lu Qingzong saw that the bowl was empty, so he scooped a bowl of water from the jar and continued drinking. Nowadays, the soldiers on duty at the fortress have no food to eat, their work is slack, and the sound of patrolling the streets and playing night watches is also low. He was afraid that he would fall asleep and not be able to hear, which would delay him from getting up at night to feed the red flag, so he drank more water before going to bed. People are hungry and horses are also hungry. They have to get up three times a night to feed. A while ago, Lu Qingzong fed the red flag twice one night. On the third watch, he didn't get up. This animal used its mouth to pull open the rope, pushed open the stable door valve, and went out to bite off an arrow at the garrison. When it returned, its belly bulged as if it had been pregnant for six months. At that time, the veteran soldiers in the courtyard were overjoyed, eagerly counting when the red flag would hold up to death. No one cares about the regulations set by the Wanli year for burying war horses. At least in disaster years, the superiority of cavalry lies here in the Yuhibo border army. When the warhorse dies due to certain reasons, everyone can have a meal of stewed horse meat. If there are special talents who have mastered culinary skills, such as Chao Yao, who served as a soldier in Baoding Prefecture in his early years, he can still make fragrant horse meat fire. Later, the red flag did not make everyone as they wished, so they stomped and digested the arrows themselves. After that, Lu Qingzong dared not let it eat too much. He fed it three times during the day and three times at night, and locked the stable with a gourd lock at night to save it from coming out on its own. Sixteen, a young bald man, was not very old and worked very skillfully. After a while, he clapped his hands and came back, saying, Brother Lion, I've cooked the beans, cut the horse grass, sprinkled salt, and just cut the ingredients at night. I'll turn off the fire later and leave. After speaking, the little bald man squatted in the corner with his hands in hand, and his hands pulled towards the dog's lair. He looked at the appearance of his fist hitting with 30.2 movements, but it was not strong enough. Lu Qingzong smiled and said, Who did you learn boxing from? Hey, I learned to sneak a peek at the management team. What kind of boxing do you learn, little monk? We soldiers all have armor, and you can't kill anyone with just a pair of fists in half a day. 
It's very cruel. What should we learn then? One courage, two strength, and three martial arts skills. Don't rush to learn. Eat more, sleep more, run more, and jump more. In two years, use a stone lock to practice strength, and when your body is smooth, you can learn more. Lu Qingzong thought for a moment and said, then find the old thief Chao and ask him to teach you how to throw wrestling. Catch someone and throw Amitba Buddha on the ground. The heavier you wear, the harder you throw, and directly surpass it. Isn't it more interesting than this and that fist? Little Sixteen remained silent for half a day, reaching out to throw little diamond wind at the edge of the dog's kennel, but dared not, only grinning foolishly. After a pause for a while, he raised his head again and asked seriously, Brother Lion, I heard from Brother Gao that the general will come back tomorrow and receive military pay. He is going to buy his aunt-in-law, and when the general comes back, will we have something to eat? The smile on Lu Qingzong's face remained calm. After a while, he let out a dry laugh and pointed outside, saying, I don't know, but you have something to eat now. The beans are ripe, go and grab some to eat. End of this chapter Chapter 5 Changes You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 5 Changes at Dawn Lu Qingzong fed his horse and stood in the courtyard wearing a mixed leather jacket brushing his teeth. A messenger stood on the roof of a courtyard cave and announced that today's grand parade would be cancelled. The border army has small exercises every day, led by team officers for training, a big exercise is held every five days, led by the garrison to train the entire camp. When they were able to eat their fill, their training intensity was very high. In the past, he ran long obtained some food and forage from elsewhere. As long as they ate for five consecutive days, they could not spare the entire fortress's officers and soldiers carrying 80 pounds of weight and three days of food and forage to complete high-intensity training such as marching, camp formation, and digging trenches. Nowadays, there is a shortage of food and supplies, and training is also insufficient. Team officers generally focus on Q training, aiming to restrain soldiers from going out and causing trouble. Without the conditions of having military pay and provisions, even the shrewd generals who exercise restraint can only achieve restraint. It's difficult to maintain even if you don't want to improve. As long as you can restrain your soldiers from escaping the fortress and plundering the people, it's even worth it to the emperor and his elderly family. If it weren't for this, hunting would not have fallen on the shoulders of Lu Qingzong, a family member who was selected as a leader. Where is the reason to let the most elite soldiers go hunting for a living? He got up early and went to the kanji room to have a bowl of kanji. Lu Qingzong took the red flag and Xiao Zhuanfeng out of the city again. Unfortunately, he didn't see any prey. In the morning, I wanted to go back to the castle and see if the wild goose stew was ready. As soon as I arrived at the city gate, I saw Xiao Sixteen waiting for him. When I saw him from afar, I shouted loudly, Brother Lion, come back quickly. Take him and walk towards Lu Qingzu's barracks. What's going on? The management team was called by the general to the conference hall at noon. When they come back, let me find you. Hurry up and go to the barracks. Along the way, Lu Qingzong saw someone in another courtyard with a worried expression, carrying luggage and putting it on the back of mules and horses. This made Lu Qingzong's heart skip a beat, and his sense of unease grew stronger. He thought to himself, is this going to be expelled? Do you want to start without even having a full meal? But the bell and drum tower on the street didn't ring. When Lu Qingzu arrived at the courtyard of his barracks, he saw many other familiar border soldiers standing in the courtyard of the cave dwellings, some wearing armor and some only wearing jackets and weapons, each carrying their own bags. At the entrance of the management camp, Lu Qingzu was wearing a red cloth faced iron armor and a mandarin duck battle jacket, holding only two northern army helmets. He pulled down the small flag on his helmet gun and looked up to see his brother in the room. He waved and said, come down, there's an accident. Sixteen also came in and packed my things. After speaking, he turned around and entered the barracks. 
As Lu Qingzong walked, he greeted familiar figures in the courtyard. When he entered the barracks, he saw the management team with a scar on their forehead, Chao Yao, sitting on the Kong and asking, Brother, what's wrong? Lu Qingzu pulled down the map from the wall, rolled it up and handed it to Sixteen who followed him to tie a rope. He pointed it to the bedside and asked Lu Qingzong to sit down, saying, General asked me to wait for the meeting this morning. Hmm the situation is not good. The older brother's expression was particularly complicated, and he didn't know where to start. He looked up at Lu Qingzong and said, Governor Wu of Shangxi has committed suicide. Wu Zhuang, the Governor General of Shangxi, is a divine doctor. I have served as a military governor in Haizhou and Gaizhou, and was appointed as the Deputy Inspector of Shandong, Ren Yongping. Later, I took over as the Governor of Denglai from Yuan Kelly, but I couldn't get along with Mao Wenlong. The two often exchanged insults in official documents, so I was transferred to Shangxi Sanbian last year as the Governor General. This hasn't been over a year yet. Self, how could you commit suicide? Lu Qingzu took off his helmet and scratched his head, frowning and saying, there was a mutiny in Guyuan town, and the border troops were causing trouble. Last year, on the day of the Longevity Day in December, the governors covered their heads and did not report to the court. This year, the mutiny troops have shifted to Jingyang, Fuping, and Sanyuan, and even captured a guerrilla general named Li Ying. On the official documents brought back by the general from Yulin, there were bandits in places such as Luochuan, Chunhua, Sanshui, Luyang, Qingshui, Qingxian, Hancheng, Yijuan, Zhongzhong, Shiquan, Yichuan, Sueda, Jiazhou, Yao, Jingning, Tongguan, Yangpinguan, and Jinshuaguan. Those who die die die, and those who live are afraid of guilt Lu Qingzong opened his mouth, with countless emotions stuck in his throat, unable to utter a word. In my memory, there is a story about the Shangxi uprising before the fall of the Ming dynasty. This uprising ultimately broke into Beijing and destroyed the Ming dynasty, but he never thought that he was already involved in it. The court was busy fighting against the Donglu, and the silver and grain were all transported to Liaozhen. They didn't even care about paying us. The general went to Yulin and not only didn't ask for military pay, but he was also forced by General Wu to demand more than ten horses. There was really no other way, and Hong Kanyi gave him an idea to eat empty pay. General Wu's name is Wu Zimian. He is like a trader, with food and horses in the army. Those who can be greedy are greedy, and they sell them quickly. Those who are capable are very capable. The soldiers of the border army didn't like him. Every morning, when the people in the barracks woke up, their entertainment activities included exchanging insults without naming names, complaining about grievances, and seeking revenge. Anyway, everyone thought the other party was scolding Wu Zimian. Such a commanding officer effectively bridged the possible rift between the army and soldiers, and everyone remained close as brothers. The border troops in Yensui town are probably looking forward to when he will be transferred or dismissed. Eating empty pay. Yes, our servants were supposed to receive double rations and double pay. Nowadays, the court does not pay the border troops salaries, and the military supplies sent nearby during disaster years have also been halved. However, in the end, we can still ensure that one person can eat enough. Lu Qingzu sighed and raised his hand to grind his short chin beard, saying, The general has reported an extra 460 servants. If the court could provide food for 200 people, the army in the castle would not be so hungry that they just wanted to run away, if the court could provide food for 400 people, they would be able to leave the city for a field battle after three days of hunger, but. The elder brother changed the subject and said. It will take some time for the imperial court to approve the food and grass for the servants. The remaining grain in the fort will not last more than a month, even the millet kanji. At the time of military deployment, it is not until autumn that troops will be mobilized. The food supply for the servants is insufficient, and if the soldiers cannot eat enough, they will have to go to war. They will only run even harder. Therefore, the general planned to take the risk of dispersing his troops, 
releasing some people and forming small teams to search for food, whether it was begging along the street or self-rescue in the forest. It didn't matter if he dared to join the rebel army and bandits Lu Qingzu said helplessly, shaking his head and saying, I heard that the general's idea seems to have been privately approved by Hong Kanjing. In name, it is to mediate with many rebel troops, but in reality, it is to find a meal for himself. Hong Kanjing is the grain supervisor and political commissar of Shangxi, Hong Qingzhou. Lu Qingzong roughly understood what this meant and said, in this way, I'm afraid the person who was released won't be able to come back. There won't be many who can come back, but now there's not enough food and supplies. Instead of letting the soldiers become deserters, it's better to let them go. Even if we don't let them go, there will be more and more deserters, but deserters will break the law. The subordinates released by the general themselves will have a chance to return in the future, whether they make military achievements or receive food from the court. These people need to be led by military officers, so the general and management teams will be drawn lots in the conference hall. Those who draw long lots will stay, while those who draw short lots will leave Lu Qingzu said all these words in a daze, looking much more relaxed. He let out a long sigh, unable to say whether the responsibility was on his shoulders or whether he felt relieved, before slowly reaching out his hand. A half-cut wooden stick is lying in the palm of the hand. Chao Yao sitting on the Kong didn't have the same solemn expression as the two brothers. He chuckled and threw his hand at the table, which was also a short note. We have been selected, Lion. Let's go with our brothers. Note. Sergeant Fu chooses a method that is both refined and rigorous in military service, requires strict training, revitalizes the trend of decadence, with 3,000 soldiers in each battalion, existing generals to oversee them, and a member of various officials appointed to supervise them. He conducts major and minor exercises every five days, and combines them with a battalion of personnel. Starting from the beginning, conduct a training formation. Do not continue to play children's games as if facing the enemy. Repeated orders. Temperance is awe-inspiring. Left and right advance and retreat. War is like the law without disorder. The shape is round but the momentum does not disperse. There are few mistakes. Take on heavy responsibility, Huang Ming Jing Shiwen Bian Volume 238, Zeng Mi Xu, Wu Zhuang was a great scholar in Guangzhou, who had been ill for a long time and became a doctor. He compiled the Ji Yin Gang Mu and Ji Yang Gang Mu, and was particularly skilled in gynecology. End of this chapter. Chapter 6 Release of Soldiers. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 6 Release of Soldiers in the Second Year of Chongzhen, on the seventh day of the second month. In the afternoon, He Ren Long, the defender of Yuha Fortress, issued a command to the entire fortress, appointing a total of 170 soldiers stationed at the border of the fortress, each carrying three days of dry food and leading horses as troops. They were stationed by the Wooding River outside the Jiachen soldier fortress. He Renlong led his horse along the river, walking slowly. This river is also known as the Yinchuan River. Yinchuan Post is named after it, and sometimes people call it the Mudu River due to its severe vegetation damage, unpredictable flow, depth, and clarity. Now he is like this confused river, unsure whether his decisions are good or bad, but things are so bad that there is no other way. He stood still and looked back at the previous teams of soldiers on the opposite side, then finally pressed his sword and walked towards the front of the team. He picked up his fist and silently bowed to the crowd. I believe the matter has already spread, and all the brothers know what it is to leave the castle. In fact, he has a lot to say, and being on guard makes such a decision that he is very frustrated, so frustrated that it is difficult to speak. He was a military jinsher in the late Wanli period, and the first vacancy he filled was defense. At that time, the court attacked the Hu in the north, hung the Japanese in the east, annihilated the Japanese in the west, and broadcasted in the south, and all attacks were unbeatable. There is a delay in military pay, even if only 70% of it can be received, 
both the military and officials consider it a normal phenomenon. The court has high expenses, and everyone can understand the difficulties. They tightened their belts and gritted their teeth before coming over. In the early years of the Tianchi era, the past two years of unpaid wages were paid up. In the fourth year of the Tianchi era, after years of unpaid wages were paid up by the border army, they basically received full military pay that year. At that time, the training was serious and the drills were also very impressive. Qi Jiguang's code of conduct, Li Chengliang's encirclement and hunting, and Su Guangqi's regulations were all compiled into military books and battle books by the imperial court, which were issued to local generals to train their soldiers and prepare them for the next war at all times. At least for He Long, he never expected the situation to deteriorate so quickly. In the fifth year of the Tianchi era, the situation rapidly declined, with only 27.5% of the military pay belonging to Yensui town, and 38% in the sixth year. The morale of the troops became unstable, and they began to have deserters like before Zhang Zhuzheng ascended to the cabinet. Five years of deserters, he ordered his troops to capture them, lock up the border, search for the mountains, and bring them back with severe military punishment. After six years of deserting soldiers, he sent someone to search for them. In the southern cities of Miji Sueda, he brought them back and persuaded them with reason and emotion. After seven years of the Tianchi Rebellion, he could only personally search for it. He went deep into Hengshan and Luvliang Mountains, and found soldiers who would rather kneel down and kowtow to him than come back. What could he do if he didn't want to come back? Everyone is human, they don't want to starve to death. He came home to farm and found a way to get cattle and donkeys. As a bandit, he went to negotiate with the bandit leader to get the people out. At the same time, recruit refugees to fill the vacancy of soldiers in the castle. To prevent the border army from fleeing again, he gritted his teeth and swallowed up the military garrison outside the Yuha fort. He also recruited a general flag guard army from the Yensui Wei to farm for the planting army. In the first year of Chongzhen and the first year of Chongzhen, there were not many deserters. When the new emperor ascended the throne, he not only granted amnesty to the whole country, but also distributed a large part of the military pay that year. He also used his savings to buy more than fifty sets of winter clothes for his soldiers in the castle, urging them not to pawn their swords, bows and arrows, as there would be future wars. Tell everyone that the situation can improve, and indeed, Shangxi has been experiencing drought for three consecutive years and seasons. Even if we escape, there is no place to survive. Even if we don't have enough to eat in Yuha Fort, we still can't die from hunger. Perhaps the situation will improve next year. But the situation in the second year of Chongzhen was not good, not even a penny. This year, he really has no face to persuade the soldiers to stay, and he really can't get food for his subordinates. The court only provides half of the military food, which is enough to feed 300 people in Yuha Fort. When Shangxi needed troops, it would be better to have 300 troops with remaining combat power in Yuha Fort than 500 hungry soldiers with weak hands and feet. He is sorry for you. The mountains are high and the waters are long. While you are wandering outside, you can't bring anything to bid you farewell, only some arrows. Please fill the arrow pot. I can't survive outside, whether it's a month or two, or five or ten years. As long as he is still alive, even if he's not a military officer and goes home to farm, as long as you come and find him, I'll take care of you if I have a bite to eat. After speaking, He Renlong took off a wine bowl from his horse's back, bent down to scoop a bowl of water from the river, and pitifully self-mocked, the castle is so poor that it doesn't even have wine. He has the right to use the water from the river to replace wine and apologize to his brothers. The border soldiers standing opposite He Renlong were full of emotions, and no one could say a word. Those who gritted their teeth in astonishment or clasped their fists in salute, were emotionally excited and could only say a thousand words in the end. General. He Renlong's eyes also turned red. He flipped the bottom of the wine bowl and put it away. He pursed his lips and slowly nodded, 
then pretended to smile casually and said, other women, let's not talk to him, so as not to be laughed at by others. What kind of captain is taking it with you? It's not like being in a castle outside, so it's important to be careful in everything. Those of you who lead the troops often send someone back to take a look. Maybe one year the court will issue unpaid wages, and he can work with you again he run long arched his hand again and said, we are destined to stay here for now. Brothers. Take care. Lu Qingzong stood in the crowd with his horse, right behind his brother. As the only servant Xian Feng who left Yuha Fort with the border army, his art style was different from others. He held the red flag and knew he was going to leave with his brother, so he ran long gave him the horse, others have more than ten arrows in their quivers, and there are two quivers hanging from their horses. Thirty-three arrows, of which six are the best carved feather fast arrows. The hunting dog named Zayas Huanfeng, as well as the director of the Yuhibo Roden Control Office, Meijian Mei, followed him. Director Mei was sitting in a wooden basket on horseback, looking very unhappy with this small room with air leaks on all sides. He was so angry that he kept panting around in the cage. Others can dress as lightly as possible, and some people don't even wear armor. He is good, human, horse, cat, and dog, with a full four mouths, on top of his head, he wore two northern military helmets and a red border armor. He hung a goose feather sword at his waist and held a seven-foot short spear, as if going out to war. The walls of Yuha Fort were filled with people, and nearly two hundred soldiers from the border army formed their own groups and headed south along the river under the farewell of He Renlong. No one knew what the defenders standing on the city would feel at this moment. Those who leave feel even heavier, and only a few have clear goals, most of whom do not know where to go. Stepping out of the distance, Lu Qingzong and his elder brother stood side by side, looking at the stretching mountains on both sides and sighing, General he is not bad to his subordinates. Lu Qingzu, with a heavy heart, nodded and said, The general has always believed that generals who only know the constraints of military law are just mediocre. He said that commanding soldiers ultimately requires empathy, but now they are in dire straits. Heart to heart, cannot compare to a hungry heart. Lu Qingzu then changed his colors and said, We, the 20.4 people, only have three days of food. If we walk fast, we can reach Ansai. It's 40 miles south to Miji, and the road to Yenin Prefecture is really difficult to walk. If you need to find a way to get some food on the way, you have to rely on your small diamond wind. I want to go home first and then do other calculations when I get home note. The data on unpaid wages from the end of the Wanli period to the seventh year of the Tianxi period is from the Tang draft of the Duji Memorial the amount of salary paid in Yensui town from the sixth year of Tianxi to the second year of Chongzhen was derived from the Duji Memorial. Border Salary Department, End of this Chapter Chapter 7 Guishan Mao you are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 7 Guashan Mao The border army from Yuha Fort searched for a village to settle in before dusk, which used to be called Guashanmo. Mao is a type of Lus hill in the northwest with a flat top and steep slopes. The village is built right next to the hill, with many eye dwellings along the steep mountain walls, as well as more residential courtyards. In the past, it was also a large village with hundreds of households. Last spring, there were several households here. When Lu Qingzong went out to recruit soldiers, he saw the shepherd from Guashan Mao singing folk songs on the road. The scenery of previous years is vividly remembered, but this year there are only collapsed and dilapidated courtyards, as well as cave dwellings where doors and windows are covered with yellow clay. Adding a touch of desolation. The nearly 200 border troops released by He Renlong from Yuha Fort were divided into three groups at the mouth of the river. One group led troops northeast to bypass Yulin City and go to Bayadizu, with the destination being Shinmu County and Fugu County. The team heading to Qingyang Prefecture and Pingliang Prefecture also bid them farewell by the river, carrying shoes and barefoot, and wading over a foot deep into the Wooding River to the west bank. They were about to enter Hengshan. Finally, only two teams, Lu Qingzu and Chao Yao, went south,
bringing together a total of 50 people. Shi Chang Tian Shoujing led his troops to chop firewood, while his elder brother Lu Qingzu had already climbed up the slope of the mountain wall when he first arrived at Guoshanmo, to climb high and observe the terrain. Those familiar faces were all filled with uncertain worries about their future, but Chao Yao and his team were quite at ease. They chopped a withered tree and ran around the village like hammers, breaking open the soil embryos that sealed the cave dwellings when the people were fleeing, and searching everywhere for something useful. It was said to be a draw, but Lu Qingzong felt that there were some issues with the soldiers released by He Renlong. Lu Qingzu's team was recruited from the refugees last year. This year, there was insufficient food and supplies, and their training was not in place. Their skills were limited, and according to the endurance of the old border army, the only thing they could handle was the formation. So twenty people were released. As for Chao Yao's team, they are all over thirty years old and have outstanding military skills. There are also many veterans who participated in the Battle of Saru, but they have been thieves for several years and are difficult to manage. Chao Guanduan, the old thief, was even happier. He instructed his subordinates to chop down the door panels, set up a bonfire, and was holding on to his wife to show off the bronze mirrors he had bought with three beans. He didn't know what was roasting on the fire, but when he saw Lu Qingzong wandering in the village, he opened his hand and greeted him. Lion, lion. Look at you wandering around the village for a while, what are you looking for? I didn't look for anything. I took Xiao's Wanfeng to the fields outside the village and didn't see any living creatures. Lu Qingzong walked over and shook his head, saying, I want to see if there is. Chao Guanduan, I didn't see senior brother after two rounds. Have you seen him? Shi Chenguoxian ranks third at home, so everyone calls him Gao Laosan. Chao Yao chuckled and waved his hand, saying, Hey, what are you looking for? Don't worry about Lao Gao. He went to the Seven Eyes Kiln on the other side of the mountain to find his aunt. He probably won't be back until night. He even borrowed three douches of grain from me and said he wants to buy her back. I didn't listen to his advice. If I had to tell him to take the two of them over and tie up his mother. In law, I would have to give him a free year's sleep as a son of a bitch, and in the end, I would have to give him food. Not to mention, among these two teams, Chao Yao is undoubtedly a wealthy man. He left Yuha Castle with two mules in his fashion luggage, and some items were carried by his soldiers. This may also be the reason why Chao Yao's army was very comfortable. They knew they couldn't starve to death, and if they couldn't, they could slaughter these two mules and eat for a few days. So you borrowed his food. What can I borrow or not borrow? I gave it to him. He said that the family at that time was helping and saving lives. Shit. Chao Yao spat into the fire, help and help. Why didn't he ask for my help? Chao Yao smiled obscenely and immediately exclaimed, Oh, but his sister. In. Law twisted her waist hard and said, You're so good, Chao Luer. I'm asking for your help, shameless. Chao's sister. In. Law looks ten years younger than Lao Chao. She is a beautiful woman with an oval face. She has been following Chao Yao since he joined He Renlong and has been living outside the Yuha fortress. She is also a skilled woman. Hi, I'll just talk about it now. If I know about this, he doesn't have to give his mother. In. Law as a gift. Look at the lion. As his wife got angry, Chao Yao smiled and set aside the topic, pointing to a few pieces of meat on the fire and saying, Do you look familiar? The meat aroma had already come out, and before Lu Qingzong could speak, Mrs. Chao smiled and said, Don't play tricks on the lion. This is the goose they beat. As she spoke, she looked up at Lu Qingzong and said, You know your brother, you're used to being a jerk. You're feeling upset when you see yourself drawing a short draw. When you're about to leave the castle, she instructed someone to go to He Yong to ask for Yenzi. We're going to have one, Chao Yao said, picking up a wooden stick and looking at the heat. He blew it and handed it to Lu Qingzong, I'll give you the roasted goose legs. That's for your brother, and the rest will be shared with the brothers for stewing. 
Lu Qingzong didn't react at all. He fixed his gaze on the willow twig sign that Chao Yao had reached over and said, Do you want one? It's good to keep one of the geese you beat for them. It's not a big deal whether we see them in the future. Let's eat until we're full. Just thinking about it, although Lu Qingzong felt that he couldn't do it, Chao Yao wanted to bring back a goose. The roasted goose legs were delicious, and he sat down to eat. Seeing him sit down, Sister Dot in Dot La Chao stood up and patted the floating soil on the old cotton jacket, smiled at him, and said, Lion, you guys talk about business. I'll go inside and burn the con. I can't sleep at night without tidying up. As the person walked step by step into the cave, they were nowhere to be seen. Only then did Chao Yao turn his twisted neck back, and the large faceplate with a scar on its forehead still had a silly smile like in a falling dream. After regaining consciousness, he shook his head and sighed, Your sister dot in dot law is a good woman. Chao Yao told Lu Qingzong that these were useless. He didn't have a wife and didn't understand these things. He just nodded and asked with a gossipy mind, Brother Chao, how long has my sister dot in dot law been with you? How long have you been with me? Upon hearing the question, Chao Yao reached out to Lu Qingzong and stopped his hand holding the leg of a wild goose. He leaned back and closed his eyes, pondering, yes, it has been ten years, right. It was during the Battle of Saru, um. Ten years. Ten years. Lu Qingzong paused, widened his eyes in surprise, handed over his goose leg, and blurted out, I think my sister dot in dot law is only twenty. Yes, she was with me on the eleventh day of that year. Without Salhu, I, Chao Luer, would never have been able to win such a good woman in my life. Chao Yao took a fierce bite from the leg of a goose and ate it with oil in his mouth. Fragrant. Let me tell you something. Yan's leg was handed back, and Chao Yao played with the bonfire with a wooden stick, his eyes shining with fire, and his pace slowed down. In that big war, the army was defeated, and I escaped with the general. We counted the size of the soldiers. As we approached the border, the general ordered Xiong Tingbai to execute them. I led nineteen brothers to kowtow and worship heaven and earth, agreeing to live and die together, and escaped into the border. It's snowing heavily in Guangping Prefecture, and even the county and city are afraid to go. I wanted to find a village to buy some food. Don't look at me like that, I'll be your age and not a jerk enough. I just want to return to Hunan alive and sell my boots in Dujong. I searched for the village, but it was already looted clean. The defeated army who arrived there first didn't rest well with me. The man was completely killed, and only the woman was left to cook. We are all extremely hungry Chao Yao took a deep breath and spoke fluently, there is still food in the village, so we drew a knife against that group of people. Many of them just ran out of food when we started fighting. I saw how beautiful and pure she was, and I didn't know how to say anything. So I said, take her home. She took me home, it's a great family. I still remember that in the courtyard where I entered three times, the screen walls and tiles were covered in snow. It's really nice. The wing room was burning, and both of the six backyards in the front yard were dead. I helped her carry her parents out and bury them, taking a big advantage. We both paid respects on the grave. People say I'm stupid, but I'm not stupid. I can't keep such a good woman if I don't mess around. After kowtowing my head, I made up my mind that even if I go back to my hometown in Hunan, I'll have to leave the grass behind. In this life, I won't be able to farm for others anymore. My wife will eventually belong to someone else. Later, when I went to rob Dao, she was a thief's wife. I went up the mountain to become a thief, and she became the wife of the village suppression, when I am in charge of the team, she becomes the team's mother. In. Law. She's like me, no, she's my brother. Chao Yao turned his head with a smile and said seriously, if I had kept my composure, I wouldn't have died many times. After speaking, he took a deep breath again, his face restrained from reminiscing, and reached out to scratch between the two, saying, brother, can we talk about something serious? 
End of this chapter. Chapter 8. Where to go and where to follow. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 8. Where to go and where to follow Actually, Lu Qingzong wanted to ask Chao Yao more about the Battle of Saru. It's just that Chao Yao doesn't want to say anything. He can talk about everything before and after that battle, but that battle. If he doesn't want to say anything, he has nothing to say. As night falls, smoke rises from the countryside in a deserted village. On the earthen stove frame made of yellow mud, there was an iron pot. Chao Yao's people split the thigh less goose slices into two halves and stewed them in their respective pots. They also took some seasoning from the back of the mule and served it as a soup of dry food. Stewed soup, the soup is the best. One pancake is not enough to eat, it can't be turned into two pancakes. The soup is different. Adding some water halfway through can turn it into two bowls of soup. What Chao Yao wants to say is where to go. Your brothers are scholars. If it weren't for the drought and failure to pay taxes, Lu Sai wouldn't have been in trouble and let you two join the army. Both of you are sensible and knowledgeable. He raised his hand and swept through the village, saying, My twenty point seven brothers, from northern Jili, Shangxi, Shandong, and Hunan. Even if our hometown is in Shangxi, there is no one left. Your brother is a soldier's fool. As soon as he enters the village, he climbs high and sets up outposts, but can't find anyone. Let me ask you, you tell me the truth. Chao Yao looked around and leaned closer to Lu Qingzong, whispering, what are your plans to head south? I don't know, Lu Qingzong said, wiping the oil stains on his mouth and shaking his head more than a decade later, he was skeptical about whether the Ming court would be overthrown by the Yinchuan post guards who taught him horsemanship. In the blink of an eye, his elder brother was expelled from Yuha Fort. At noon, he received a notice and in the afternoon, he had already set off. At night, he camped in the wilderness and mountains, and the team only carried two and a half days of dry food. At this time, no matter what he thought, he was too pale. What do you think, how will you protect the world in ten years? He doesn't even know what to eat in three days, or whether he can walk to Ansei in three days. However, Lu Qingzong couldn't bear the disappointed look in Chao Yao's eyes. He knew that if there was no other way, Chao Yao could only lead people up the mountain to become bandits. After a moment of contemplation, Lu Qingzong sighed and said, Brother Chao thinks where did the left hanging sun hit? The left hanging sun he spoke of, known as Wang Zhijue, also known as Left Hangzi, also known as Wang Left Hangzi, rose up in Long Erzui, Ichuan. The court knew that this person was from last year and said he had bandits riding on countless horses. Qingjian people have been bandits in the mountains since their early years. Miao Mei, Feishan Tiger, Big Red Wolf and others who are with him are the bandit leaders of the Xiaoju Mountain Forest in the south. Chao Yao squinted his eyes and rummaged through his bag, taking out a cigarette stick and bag. He put a little bit on it and lit the campfire. Amidst the smoke, he asked, Are you saying you want me to throw a left hanging stick? Tobacco was still a rare commodity in the north during this era. It flowed from Luzon to Fujian for cultivation, and was brought to the north by the southern army's northward migration, giving it the function of avoiding the cold. Popular among the military officers in the border army of Yensui town. But what Chao Yao pulled out from the backs of those two mules, whether it was the aged tobacco from the previous year's road robbery or the one exchanged from border military officers, would not surprise Lu Qingzong. During the meeting at Yuha Fortress, it was mentioned that there were thieves riding on a large number of horses, but I don't believe it. Chao Yao shook his head and said, including all those who ride horses, donkeys, cows, and mules, there is a total of 2,000 riders to the sky. He clearly looked down on Wang Zuohang and didn't think it was a clear path. He exhaled his cigarette and waved his hand, saying, it's better to go find Wang Jiayin than to cast his hand at him. Wang Jiayin was also a thief. Under him were Bu Zhan and I, Yang Lu, and others who specialized in plundering wealthy families in Fugu County, 
located on the northeast wall of Yuha Fort at the border of Qin and Jin. Lu Qingzong quickly waved his hand and said, It's not about throwing, it's about avoiding them. The memory in his mind is not clear about the constantly emerging rebel leaders during this period, and there are only three characters who can be named. Gaoing Xiang, Zhang Xianzhong, and Li Zicheng. Coincidentally, he knows all three of them. Gaoing Xiang is a native of Ansei and the leader of horse thieves. He once lived in the Miji prison from spring to autumn for smuggling horses. He knows a lot and has taught horse riding, archery, and equestrian skills, as well as some practical experience. They devoted themselves to teaching the two brothers, hoping that Lu Juren could release him. However, Lu Juren was timid, and Gao Yingxiang's brothers outside dared not even take the gold and silver boxes to their homes. In the end, Lu Qingzong finished eating Gao Yingxiang's severed head, and it was his brother outside who bribed the county magistrate at the time that saved him. On the night Gao Yingxiang left his prison cell, he led people back to the city and shot arrows at their front door. He also smashed a brass door ring with blue bricks. This person gathered starving people in Ansei last year and rebelled. In another memory of Lu Qingzong, he was called Chuan Wang and turned to fight against the East and West. Later, Zhang Xianzhong became the emperor of the Western regions. The Lu brothers were not very familiar with him and had only met him once. Before joining the army, the two brothers set up a flowing banquet in their hometown. I only remember that day, a constable in Yenin prefecture named Zhang Xianzhong drank a lot of wine and made a fool of himself, cursing the heavens and the earth, and complaining. There was also Li Zicheng, a Yinchuan post guard who was also called Li Hongji at that time. He was the same age as Lu Qingzu, so when Lu Qingzong met, he would call him Huang Weij, and his relationship was not far or close. Back in the day, Lu Juren invited a post station official to teach horsemanship, and even couldn't bear to invite a delicious meal. After coming a few times, they stopped coming and sent the young Li Hongji to teach him for a while. Lu Qingzong did not know who the heroes who rose up in the army were good or bad, or who was strong or weak, but he knew who lived, who lived long and who was strong. So the other leaders of the uprising couldn't rely on them, and defecting to them was a dead end. Naturally, they didn't recommend Chao Yao to join them. They just asked, where do you think these thieves are spreading now? Chao Yao didn't immediately answer, squinting his eyes and pondering, avoid them. Left Hangzi and Wang Jiayin have more horses and people. Yes, they need to avoid walking. But we need to go south, they also need to go south. Hiding and walking is not only for fear of encountering narrow paths, but also because large animals and people have to eat, and the places where the rebels have passed are afraid that there is not even grass in the mountains. Collision with them is a dead end, even following behind them on the path they have walked is also a dead end. As he spoke, Chao Yao picked out a short branch from the campfire and drew it on the ground, saying, their momentum is getting stronger and stronger. Are you not afraid that the court will call the border army to attack them? We must leave the border defense, the further away from the border army, the better. The roads in northern Shangxi are all traversing horizontally, with mountains everywhere. The officials and soldiers cannot enter the mountains, nor can they. Chao Yao easily used the Yellow River to separate Shangxi and Shangxi, connecting several towns as important nodes by drawing lines. The mountains north of Yenin are bare, and whoever goes in will starve to death. Either they have to cross the Yellow River to the east and enter Ovlying Mountain, or they have to go south, south of Yenin. Lu Qingzong looked at the route drawn by Chao Yao and couldn't help but praise inwardly, you truly deserve to be an old thief who escaped from the aid of Liao, pointing to the dots along the west bank of the Yellow River from north to south, he said, Miji, Sueda, Qingjian, Yenchuan, Yenchang, Ichuan, and Hancheng, is this Yaozhou. After passing Hancheng, Chao Yao turned slightly west and pointed three points at the intersection of three rivers. He looked up at Lu Qingzong and smiled, those who have read books know geography. After speaking, he raised his hand and lightly tapped the three points before taking the conversation and saying, 
Fuping, Sanyuan, and Jingyang are approaching Xi'an Prefecture, the wealthiest and fattest place in the north of Wei River. It is said that this tobacco was transported from the south to Jingyang and cut there. If I were that reckless leftist, I would definitely have taken this into Shangxi. End of this chapter. Chapter 9. Rice Fat. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 9 Rice Fat Lu Qingzong is witnessing a great collapse. He understood the normal world as under social rules, where a person wants to control their own life, and ability is the indicator of the test. The stronger the ability, the more adept life becomes. After the collapse of this set of social rules, on the contrary, people do not even see the level that tests their abilities and are already on a dead end. Farmers used to be accustomed to being obedient to the people, but now they can't even pay taxes on borrowing grain and can't farm anymore. Before studying, I focused on studying and became an official through the imperial examination. Now, my family is hungry and I can't read anymore. The border army used to guard the border to eat food, and the station troops were able to practice and perform meritorious deeds. Now, if they stay in the army, they will starve to death. Even his father, who is an official, cannot become an official because he has told the truth. If he doesn't get tax.free again, there will be big trouble. Shi Cheng Guoxian, who went to Lin Suan to search for his aunt, returned in the latter half of the night. He heard Bian Jun, who was on duty, say that he would come back and ignore others with a straight face. Later, while on duty, someone heard suppressed crying. The next day, when Lu Qingzong heard about this, he didn't want to ask what had happened. He didn't want to mention which pot he didn't open. He estimated that most of the villagers had fled, otherwise how could they not have received their mother in dot law. But he still went and didn't say much. It's not suitable to talk too much about this kind of thing. No matter how much he said, he couldn't turn Gao Xian into a mother in dot law, so he went to find Chao Yao first. I picked up a small pottery jar from him, which contained two liang of liquor. Begging for leave from my older brother again, asking me to replace Gao Xian on duty at night and have him drink two liang. The Lu team is different from the Chao team. The members of that team are live bandits who have been loosely controlled. Leaving the Fish River Fortress feels like grass has fallen again, and the rules of the border army have been completely forgotten. No one is on duty at night. They set up small tree branches around the camp, lead four cotton threads to the campfire, and hang bells on the lines. Lu Qingzu, the leader of the Lu team, is just like Chao Yao said. He is a serious soldier who always pays attention to the fact that local officers are too busy to stay on the ground. He thoroughly investigates the terrain of the camp, its length and width, as well as the intersection of large houses, small houses, cave entrances, and exits. At night, he also sets up sentries in front and back, and sets up alternative routes for retreat. Be meticulous and never tire of it. As for why do you have nothing to do and want to rest at night and have a drink? Don't say there's no alcohol to drink, even if there's alcohol, don't even think about it. But this time there were special circumstances, and Lu Qingzu also intended to train his younger brother to lead the army, which allowed him to be on duty for Gao Xian at night. After finishing all of this, Lu Qingzong handed over the wine exchanged for 12 yen ling arrows to Gao Xian. The fact is similar to what he thought, but there are still five households in Kainyeo who have grain reserves. They have divided the land in the village and plan to carry it on for another year. If they don't believe it, the drought will continue in the fourth year. But the household that took in Aunt Gao Xian had already eaten all the stored grain before the new year, rolled up their belongings and led their cows to Shangxi, east of the Yellow River, to seek refuge with their relatives. The road is difficult and perilous, and I don't know where my Shangxi relatives are, let alone how much better Shangxi, which is separated by a large river due to the disaster in Shangxi, can be. The sea of people is vast, afraid it will never be seen again. Wait for them to march further away from Yuha Fort, and there will be more pedestrians on the road. Crowds of bankrupt farmers, horsemen dressed in sheepskin jackets, and southern merchants escorting commercial goods. 
except for a swordsman from a caravan, Lu Qingzong did not see any of these people. His older brother Lu Qingzu set up two horse riding scouts in front of the caravan, and their appearance of wearing helmets, armor, bows, and knives scared away most passers-by. Scouts can make others understand that there are troops marching behind them. In these days, the style of the official army is very bad, and there is almost no one who does not disturb the people. The difference is only between robbing and fighting for food or killing and burning villages. While they appear within sight, no matter who they are, they will choose to enter the mountain. Even when they arrived only a dozen miles away from Broken Gold Town, at the liquor shop on the official road, the lame old shopkeeper immediately caught sight of the two cavalry and took his little daughter who was helping in the shop to roll up one of the few delicacies and run towards the other bank of the river. When Lu Qingzong and his team arrived at this wilderness shop, the old shopkeeper had just led his daughter across the river, but he didn't think he had run far enough, so he continued to run towards the opposite mountain. There are female dolls at home, afraid of being mistreated by the official army of these sows competing with Jiao Cicadas. The swordsman leader who protected the caravan was seen by Lu Qingzong at this liquor store located on the official road in the countryside. The swordsman is their acquaintance and the veteran of Shenmu General A.I. Wanyin. As the saying goes, only heroes can venture into the martial arts world, but only places with martial arts can have the soil for heroes to roam freely. On the vast land connected by the Yellow Earth Road, no martial arts hero can compare to the reliable armed landlords. Originating from the Zhinda period, the ancestors of the escort industry and the label industry were mostly located in big cities. However, in the increasingly chaotic situation of northern Shangxi, especially in Miji County near the border, merchants wanted safe passage, but the label industry's thugs were unreliable. The best way to do so was to seek the protection of the AI family. Miji and AI are two big surnames, the old being the Lao AI family. In the mid-Ming dynasty, they moved to the Shao AI family, engaged in business and education, and were very wealthy. They once bought 15,000 acres of land, and now there are more than 10 members of their family who have passed the imperial examination. In the 200 years of the Ming dynasty, the number of successful candidates in Shangxi was only 800, and there are 96 counties in Shangxi, with the AI clan occupying six spots. Many villages and places here are directly named after AI, such as Aidongzhuang, Aihaiwan, Aijiaping, Aijiaqian, Zayak, etc. Up to now, the population is thriving, and there are unemployed officials from Ganzhou Prefecture in Jiangxi Province, such as AI Injia, who is at home. His third son, A.I. Wanyin, is a Shenmu general and has thousands of tenant households. However, in the current situation, even they cannot guarantee that the caravan will remain unscathed. They can only give each other face as much as possible and avoid financial losses and disasters. The old soldier came over to check the situation and knew that he Renlong had dispersed the border army that could not be raised. He said a few words and then went back. There wasn't much of a meeting, but two lazy people wrapped in sheepskin jackets brought a sheep. The sheep carried two bags of dry food cakes on their backs and tied them to the tavern without saying anything else before leaving. Afterwards, six large trucks loaded with goods walked peacefully along the official road under the guidance of the old soldiers and a dozen young students. Nevertheless, the border soldiers who set fire to stew and slaughter sheep inside and outside the tavern still looked at the caravan like wolf packs staring at their prey, making people feel scared from the bottom of their hearts. Don't even look, all the tea on that car is being sold out of the mouth. We can't eat or use it. After stewing it, we'll eat the meat that A.I. Laojiu gave us. This sheep weighs 70 pounds, and after removing the bones, one person can weigh more than half a pound. Lu Qingzu sat under the sign of the tavern and happily said to his subordinates, the AI family has informed the Suijin Town Inspection Department. We don't need to take a detour. The road before reaching Sueda today is peaceful. Lu Qingzong, who was squatting on the ground and counting, looked at his brother's words and asked his soldiers to take their eyes into the lamb pot. He shook his head and smiled, 
then stood up and threw a branch to ask the fire soldiers to divide the cleaned meat bones into two and give them to Xiao Zhuanfeng to grind his teeth. As for the director of the rodent control office, just wait and see. He was just calculating how to feed this army. During these two days of traveling, Lu Qingzong conducted a comprehensive analysis of the current environment and his own future. If you want to have a full meal, you have to go back to your hometown in Yenin Prefecture, but it is not safe. Bandits and robbers are rampant, and there are traces of bandit activity in the surrounding counties of Yenchuan, Yenchang, and Ganquan. It is uncertain when the entire village will be looted and captured. If you want to protect your family, you need to master military force. These border troops are the people who are sent to you. The only problem is not being able to afford it. To feed 50 border soldiers, at least 20 stones of grain are needed each month. Stone is a versatile unit, with 10 liters per bucket and 10 buckets per stone. Nowadays, in the arid northern Shangxi, there is no harvest of wheat grains. Only by planting drought-resistant millet can one barely harvest 4 to 5 dough per acre. Lu Qingzong's family only has his father and mother, without strong labor, and all the fields have been rented out. The grain handed over by tenants must be used to pay taxes, and the remaining grain is enough to support seven or eight people. Basically, if the two brothers go home to eat their fill, they won't be able to get any more food at home. Lu Qingzong carefully calculated and couldn't afford it. We still need to think of other ways out. During the time of stewing lamb, Lu Qingzu couldn't spare any time. He also called on his younger brothers Lu Qingzong, Tian Shoujing, and Gao Xian to explore the surrounding terrain and teach them the experience of the team leader leading troops by example. The central idea is that as an officer, one cannot be lazy or greedy for enjoyment. While Lu Qingzong secretly jotted down many key points, he also felt in his heart that his brother truly had an extraordinary interest in military affairs. In order to be a general, every detail needs to be checked. This principle is very clear in ancient military tactics, and no general does not understand it, especially after Qi Jiguang's military book was compiled and distributed to the military by the court, which even clearly stated how to ask soldiers to buy groceries. But who can truly implement it to people? Perhaps even the He Long who taught them may not be able to do it all, but it was strictly enforced by Lu Qingzu. When they returned, the lamb was also stewed, but before they even started eating, another dusty person had arrived on the official road from north to south. This person is bold, riding a donkey and not afraid to see the official army in the tavern. He just flipped over and led the donkey to bow before walking quietly over. But as soon as I took two steps, I was stopped. Because the brothers of Qingzu and Qingzong discovered that the young man holding a donkey and carrying a whistle was an old acquaintance, Li Hongji, a Yinchuan post guard who had taught them some riding skills. For Lu Qingzong, it was even more interesting. This person was not named Li Hongji in his mind, but Li Zicheng, the emperor of Dashan who later overthrew the Ming dynasty and invaded Beijing. End of this chapter. Chapter 10 Li Hongji. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 10 Li Hongji Li Hongji was born in a horse family, a registered residence that specializes in raising horses. His ancestors all worked in this profession, nicknamed Huang Liar, which is actually Huang Wazi. When I was a child, I was sent to a temple because my family was poor, and I was called Huang Liseng. At the age of nine, I returned to secular life and started herding sheep for A.I. Sure. Later, I also worked as a helper until my father passed away. I took over as a post guard in Yinchuan and was incorporated into the system. At this moment, he was wearing thick black circles under his eyes, with a tired face and an untrimmed beard connected to his temples, looking like a little old man in his thirties. Seeing the two brothers of Qingzu and Qingzong make him particularly happy, he rubbed his hands and looked around. He saw the soldiers resting in the tavern either sitting or squatting, but didn't dare to get too close. It wasn't until Lu Qingzong stood up to greet him that he led the donkey over. Ah, Brother Qingzu, the lion of the Lu family is still tall and strong. 
I wonder why there are so many military lords in this rural wine shop. I didn't expect you to be here. When Lu Qingzong saw Li Hongji, he was happy from the bottom of his heart, and his mind also remembered the scene when Li Hongji taught him equestrianism in the past. However, the two memories were intertwined, with a lot of distractions in his heart. For a moment, he was only focused on laughing and didn't know what to say. Brother Lu Qingzu was extremely enthusiastic. As soon as he came up, he grabbed Li Hongji's arm and said with a smile, Huan Wage, you came at the right time. You just stewed the sheep. Come on, come on, pour soup on half a pound of lamb. Well, this doesn't work. You guys do business and you eat. I have something else to do and I have to go to the county town. Just say a few words and leave. Li Hongji was very embarrassed, looking around to find a way out, but was pushed to the table by Lu Qingzu and sat down. He gave a signal to both sides and immediately, the border army came forward to take the reins and tie his donkey. He sat there with a hint of shyness, but before he could refuse, a large tea bowl filled with half a bowl of lamb soup was placed in front of him. This bowl of meat didn't give him a chance to refuse, and the aroma entered his nose and he couldn't help but swallow his saliva. When he opened his mouth again, his stomach, which had been hungry for a long time, began to scream uncontrollably. The words on my lips that I wanted to decline also turned into an awkward smile. After a pause, he first looked at Lu Qingzu and then at Lu Qingzong, and then smiled and said, Oh my, I haven't seen you since Fourth Lord was promoted to Yenin Prefecture. It's been over two years. Later on, I heard about the Fourth Master's incident, and you two went to Yuha Fortress to join General He. Last time I went to deliver a letter, I was still thinking about this matter, but I didn't see you too. Now they both look pretty good and have become team leaders Lu Qingzu chuckled and said, don't mention it. If the court doesn't pay the soldiers and the fortress doesn't distribute military provisions, then the brothers have asked the general to send them out to search for food. They want to go back to Yenin Prefecture and take a closer look. Oh, this is really difficult to do. Li Hongji's smile stopped and he shook his head. Nowadays, the weather outside is not good, and our descendants of Miji are not willing to stay safe in the field. Many of them have followed the thief. As in previous disaster years, joining the army to eat food is also a way out. Li Hongji shook his head, still worried about the future of the two brothers. He heard Lu Qingzong ask, Huang Wage, don't just talk about our brothers. How are you? You don't even have a horse at the post station. A sentence made Li Hongji's face show a bitter smile. Ha, this is also a long story about Wa Er Wu Nyang. He sighed and looked left and right before saying, the grass supply at the post station has been insufficient for a long time, and the horses are very weak. Last year, they rebelled everywhere, and there were urgent reports urging them. Everyone was exhausted and three post horses had to compensate, and there was no one who could handle the situation. Those uncles are all getting old, and when I have the strength, I'll take care of them. Thinking of this, Li Hongji didn't seem too annoyed. Later, his teeth were itching with anger and he patted the table and said, who knew I had just taken down the matter, and the court was going to withdraw the post station. When he slapped the table, a row of border troops who ate pita bread soaked in lamb soup stood up. Some even instinctively pushed the knife with their thumbs and pulled it out of the sheath an inch. The tail rope of the knife was put on their wrists. Lu Qingzu raised his hand to signal that everyone was okay, and Li Hongji also embarrassed and apologized to everyone by clasping fists one after another. This person is only in his twenties this year. On the one hand, the post station guards have the mission of submitting official documents and military intelligence, and on the other hand, they are also excellent reserve troops with equestrian and archery skills. Not only the post guards, but also the three groups of Yaman guards and inspection archers are involved, and this work itself has a certain degree of stability maintenance significance. They are all idle young people who ask for money but have no land, and many of them have the ability to fight, fight, and wield swords, which is an unstable factor in using martial arts to break the ban. 
there is a job that can earn a few dollars a month to make a living. If you don't have enough to eat or starve, it won't harm public security and can be used by the court. At least with Li Hongji, even the descendants of Miji have gone from thieves, and Lu Qingzong did not see any opposition from him. On the contrary, he sighed repeatedly, clearly showing the bitterness of being accustomed to being obedient to the people. Now things are going well. When it comes to dismissing the post guards, I am the first one to ride three damaged post horses like this. If I lose my livelihood, I will have to pay for three horses. If Grandpa Taizu were still alive, how could such a thing happen in the world? Even if he sold me, it wouldn't be worth three horses. Lu Qingzu kept listening quietly. He glanced at Lu Qingzong and smacked his lips as if he had made up his mind. He turned to Li Hongji and said, Why don't Huang Wage come with us to Yenin? Our brothers will come up with a solution for you regarding the three horses. Anyway, there are plenty of lice that don't itch, and we have more money to worry about. Three more horses are not too much, and three fewer horses are not too much upon hearing these words, Li Hongji burst out laughing heartily, regardless of whether Lu Qingzu's words were polite or sincere. He waved his hand and sighed, Hi. If I had met your two brothers earlier, it would have been great. It's not possible now, I've taken another job for myself. Thanks to the respect of the elders of our clan, we have elected Li as the village chief. 110 neighboring households were affected by the disaster and were unable to pay taxes to the court. They entrusted me to go to the county town to borrow some crops, rations, and silver money from Mr. A.I. As long as the money can be borrowed, the neighbors will help me solve the problem of three post horses Lu Qingzong couldn't remember how many times the man in his early twenties shook his head and sighed before him. He only heard him say, Alas, I also know this loan can't be used, but there's nothing I can do. Sixteen households this year were unable to pay taxes, abandoned their fields and burned houses, and fled to the mountains. Their taxes were spread to the remaining people. It was also a disaster year, and no one could care about others. If this matter was not resolved, the people in both villages would have to run away and have to borrow money. Wait for next year. Li Hongji glared and said, this year we have a harvest from farming. Even if we have a little more next year, we can still bring back the villagers in the mountains. They are not cowards who cheat or play tricks. If they are willing to put in effort to dig and eat in the soil, their livelihood cannot be ruined. Lu Qingzong wanted to speak several times, but didn't know what to say. At this point, he asked astringently, brother, think carefully. What if this year is still the year of drought? God must give us a way to survive, right? Li Hongji frowned with a serious expression, obviously considering the possibility. He raised his two fingers and said, even if it doesn't make people live, can the imperial monarch watch us and other small people starve to death? If you really can't pay back the money, Mr. AI can do whatever he wants. He always has to finish this year before we talk. Hey! Living people never let their urine suffocate. End of this chapter.